Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. We are inviting you to come and worship with us as we sing our praises to our Heavenly Father. Casting my cares aside, I'm leaving my past behind. I'm sitting my heart in my own. hands to yours, believing there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me is good, it's good, today's a day you have made, I will rejoice and be glad in it, today's a day you have made, I will rejoice and be glad Seeing what you say today to day. I'm putting my fears aside. I'm leaving my doubts behind. I'm giving my hopes and dreams to you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours. Believing the so Knowing that all you have in store for me is good It's good, day's a day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it Today's a day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it I won't worry about tomorrow Trusting what you say Today's the day
have led me through the fire Darkest night You're a close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived In the goodness So, so good, Lord With every breath that I am made Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God hey, hey. Your goodness is running out It's running after me
Thank you, Cordillera Songbirds, for that song, The Goodness of God's Grace. And the song that the praise and worship sang also with us speaks of the goodness of God, and it is so, so good. God's grace is really amazing. It is the lifeline of our soul, as the sang it before us today. Come, you broken. Come, you heavy laden. Come, you helpless. Come, you in despair. Come and be blessed and be saved. Come, believe and receive the goodness of God's grace. As Mrs. Placentia had shared with me that they will be singing that song today, I did not know that that is the content of the song, that it describes my feeling this week. Come broken and heavy laden and helpless, but not in despair. Come believe and receive the goodness of God's grace. And the song that we have about grace, and we have that song. Thank you, Rome, and the praise and worship team for that song. Very appropriate for our coming together today in the celebration of the Holy Communion. You know, it is really by God's grace that we are here today. Every one of us has gone through or is going through difficulties in this life, but yet we are always assured that we have that song, the goodness of God, and it is so, so good. We may not be able to understand why we are going through with all of the storms of life. Gani ang Pilipinas karon has been going through so many typhoons, not just a simple typhoons or storm, but very strong typhoons in other parts of the country. The months have gone so quickly, and it is November 1st today. And soon it will be December, and the year will be over. But yet we experience the goodness of God. In many of the celebration that we have of the Holy Communion, Every first Sunday of the month, I always give focus on what Christ has done for us on the cross. And it is good to be reminded of what he did for us on the cross. You know, it is easy for us to forget, maybe set aside what Christ has done for us on the cross, and be just overwhelmed with all the problems, the struggles that we have today. But from... Sunday to Sunday that we gather together, and it's good that we are encouraged by the fellowship, the family of the church, within our families. But it is also a wonderful time when we come to the Lord's table together and be reminded of what Christ has done for us on the cross. Ever since the early Christians meet secretly in their homes, is to remember the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church then has been celebrating communion or holy sacrament since the time. And all of the things that we do in the church, in this church, we hold significant meaning Every time we hold 
the symbol of his body and his blood shed for us. And we are always humbled by like what Christ has done for us on the cross. Yes, we do remember his grace. We do remember his mercy. We do remember his love for us. But behind that, there's so much love that God has bestowed upon each one of us today. I think of that every time we come for communion celebration, that it is not just a common time, that it is the first Sunday of the month that we celebrate, that we celebrate in a few months, but in reality, it is more than that. It is a time we call to remember of what Christ has done for us on the cross. We come for worship. It's all because of what Christ has done for us. We come together and be reminded of that sacrament that he did for us. Remembering what he did for us at Calvary. And remembering what he did for us in the garden, in the tomb. Many times we have heard the song, I come to the garden alone. It is the time in which Christ prayed that he will not go through with all of the suffering that he must go through. You know, that's why the Apostle Paul, he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, he said, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Every time I read this scripture, I always remember Pastor Tony Oliveda. He used to be the pulpit English preacher of this church. In 1997, he preached from this passage. And as I look, it, look at it again this week, I said, this is the message that I'm going to share to my brethren in the church. This time we call communion. This time we call remembrance of what Christ has done for us on the cross. It is a time to be reminded of what he has done for us. He mentioned several things, but I will just mention a few things. For I am going to build up from one level to another level and conclude it with a celebration of the element that as we hold the elements together and as we partake together, my prayer that it will have a new meaning to you, not just a custom, not just a ritual, but it will have a new meaning that it will become a means of grace to all of us. The goodness of God's grace that we have a song of the goodness of God, which is so, so good. When we gather in the Lord's table, it is not that we are off offering a new sacrifice. There's no need for another sacrifice. He did it for us once for all. And no one can copy that. No one can duplicate that. Or in other words, no one can Xerox that. Everyone who trusted the Lord Jesus Christ has been set apart by God through what he did on the cross of Calvary. Every church age, every individual, every believer who will come to him is cleansed from the bondage of sin 
and clothed with righteousness that comes from God. And that person is consecrated, set apart. Because Jesus became our, in theology, it is called substitutionary sacrifice for sin and breathed into us his own perfect, abundant, and eternal life. He came that you and I will have life. But he said, I came that you will have abundant life. That despite of challenges that we face, suffering, illness, whatever we face, the challenge of our faith, he still promised that he will come with us and that he promised that we will have abundant life when we continue to experience that amazing grace, the goodness of God. No other sacrifice. He did it for us once and for all. That is what the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Once for all. You know, in remembering of what he has done for us, it is just more than recalling that there was an event that took place more than 2,000 years ago. It has an idea of steering up our mind that we will relieve that there was a historical Christ, Jesus, as much as his life and death and resurrection as humanly possible. And it is time to be reminded once again that he left heaven to be born in the human body. December is coming. And even at the start of December months, we have already heard the songs, Christmas songs, reminding us that he left heaven to be born in the human body. Apostle Paul speaks of that in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. He said, Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, as he already existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. He left heaven to be born in human body. Every year, we are reminded what he did for us. Not only that he left heaven to be born in a human body, but also became poor, that we might become rich. Rich in his goodness. Rich in his blessings. Rich in our relationship with each other as we come together. He became poor that we might be rich. 2 Corinthians 8, 9 speaks of this. Paul said, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for the sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich in your relationship with him. Not only that he left heaven to be born in human body and he became poor that we might become rich, but also he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. The Apostle Paul speaks of this very clearly. In many of his writings, that Christ bore our sins on the cross. Even Peter mentioned this in his book. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, he said, And he himself brought our sins in his body upon the cross, 
so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness by his wounds you were healed. And with that idea, Christ willingly took our place at Calvary. And many times we have sang the song at Calvary. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and our burden were lifted up. It's because of what he has done for us on the cross. Friends, that is why we keep reminding ourselves what he has done for us. Yes, it is really amazing that God has given us the privilege of coming together to be reminded what he has done for us. He took our place on the cross and he conquered death forever for us. In order to complete that, what he has done for us, he went back to heaven. He ascended to heaven. When in fact the Bible says, therefore he also able to save forever those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. He ascended back to heaven to finish his redemptive work and to serve as our high priest. Yes, the enemy will accuse us that we are not good. There's nothing good in us. But Christ make us worthy by his amazing grace that we experience every moment of the day. As we come for the celebration of the Holy Communion today, what, is that, what it does for us? It reminds us and encourages us that until he comes again, we will do this, receive this holy sacrament, for this is the reality. It encourages us that one day we will meet our Savior once again. As we hold the elements today, it is also an encouragement for all of us that Christ is present with us, not only in this place, not only as we come together, but wherever we go, he promised to be with us. Communion then reminds us our account accountability that we need to prepare for his coming. He said in his word that we will do this until he comes again. I pray and I challenge all of us that this reminder from God's word today that these elements, this holy sacrament that we are celebrating today is not just a ritual that we go through, that the frame of the church has encouraged us, but it is a reminder to all of us that the once for all act of God, his suffering and sacrifice in the cross has still an influence for all of us today. It is indeed an amazing grace. It is indeed a wonderful experience of the goodness of God, which is so, so good. So today, as we celebrate the Holy Communion, let us be reminded that this Holy Sacrament is our obedience to what Christ has done for all of us. Let us prepare our hearts as we receive this holy sacrament today. And it is also a time to search our hearts that we need to continue to trust the Lord and never to take it lightly 
but to take it seriously. This amazing grace, this goodness of God upon our lives. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, this morning, thank you for reminding us once again that you love us so much and you have sent your only begotten Son to die for us on the cross that we might receive forgiveness, eternal life, and that you went back to heaven and prepare a place for us all. And we thank you, Father, for this grace that is always sufficient for all of us. Help us, Heavenly Father, to be reminded once again and to search our hearts. If there is anything, O oh Lord, that will keep us away in experiencing your grace, enable us, O oh Lord, to confess to you. And thank you for your arms are open, wide open, for those who will come and receive your goodness once again. All this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The invitation of the Lord's Supper continues to invite us and says, You truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who live in love and peace with your neighbors, and who intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking in His holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this sacrament to our comfort and make our honest confession to the Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with great mercy has promised forgiveness to all who turn to you with repentance and true faith. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from our sins. Make us strong and faithful in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us now pray for spiritual communion. We do not come to this your table this morning, O oh Lord, with self-confidence and pride, nor we trust our own righteousness, but we trust, we surrender to your great and many mercies. We are not worthy to gather the crumbs from under your table. But you, O Lord, are unchanging in your mercy, and your nature is love. Grant us, therefore, God of mercy, God of grace, so to eat at this your table, that we may receive in spirit and in truth the body of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, the merits of his shed blood, so that we may live and grow in his likeness and be washed and cleansed through his most precious blood and may evermore live in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who gave in love your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross of our redemption, who by sacrifice offered once and for all did provide a full, perfect, and sufficient atonement for the sins of the whole world, we come now to your table in obedience to your Son, Jesus Christ, who in his holy gospel commanded us to continue this perpetual memory, remembrance, thinking deeply of his precious death until he comes again. Oh, hear us, merciful Father, Full of grace, we humbly ask and grant that we receiving this bread and this cup 
as he commanded in the perpetual memory of his passion and death, may partake of his most blessed body and blood. In the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to your father, he gave them to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as as you drink in the remembrance of me. Amen. Father God, thank you so much for the symbols, these elements, O oh Lord, that the symbol of your body and your blood given for all of us. Thank you for your amazing love and missing grace. You are so good. Despite of our sins, you offer us to come before you confessing and you promise forgiveness. And we just come before you today, Father God that through the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus and His presence day by day in our lives, may we continue just to trust You to strengthen us each day. Bless these elements, O oh Father God, that whoever will receive this with hearty repentance and true faith, that they will receive the grace that comes from you. And may always experience your goodness throughout their lives. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. May I ask those who are helping me to the front to please come. Let us all stand up even as we receive these elements today. Those in the center aisles, you just come to the center. And those in the side aisles, there are also tables prepared for each one. So to the right and the left. So those who will partake, you may come now and receive the elements today.
Father, God, thank you for your wonderful grace. Shall we all rise now as we receive these elements together? This wafer represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you and for me. Preserve our soul and our body and everlasting life. Let us take this together with grateful heart. Let us remove our mask. This cup represents the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shared for you and for me. Let us drink this together with a thankful heart, remembering what has done for us on the cross. And let us take, drink this together. Heavenly Father, thank you once again. For your great mercies, that while we were sinners, not only that you have demonstrated your love towards mankind, but Lord, you sent your only Son so that we might have that life. And be with you forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let us all be seated at this time.